once again we're back with another episode of A Little Bit of Genius. And once again you're watching teachers from Nord Anglo International School in Hong Kong and we're discussing EdTech and Virtual School. So I'm Naima Charlier and I'm joined by Ed Fielding and Emma Coleman from our early years in primary school here in Hong Kong. So moving on we've got another question around um, I think Ed, you touched on this a little bit, the, the big lessons that we've learned um, throughout this experience of VSE. So what, what would you say were your, your big lessons? I'm, I'm just going to nip in with a quick one though, because my, my big one, and I'm sure you've got similar ones, is on it's just on how capable and how resilient young learners are, and young learners and people and staff. I think the capacity that we all have to learn in new ways and thought of ways and to be really proactive has really been pushed to the forefront through this experience because we've all had to do things we've all had to cope with huge amounts of change and the the outcome of that has been so impressive the pace of learning for some students that really did adapt well to this they've outpaced our expectations i've got maths teachers rewriting curricula because they finished the learning way in advance because the children outstripped it. So it's it's all these incredible gains that have really struck me. But but Emma, what do you think? What have you been the big lessons? Yes, absolutely. I think just how amazing and resilient children are, and also staff are and parents are as well, but in particular the children. And I think, yeah, that example is brilliant of just how amazing the children have been now that they are back in school and how those relationships were formed online and that they just grow and develop then when you are back into, into a real school. I think I've also learned, and I always knew it, but I think it's sort of brought it to the forefront, just how essential parent partnership is and how when you have that strong parent partnership and you really do listen to parents and reflect on what they're telling you about their child because they know their child best. When you do that, the outcomes are, are fantastic for that child. And at the end of the day, that's why we're all here. We all care deeply about these children. We want to make sure that they can thrive in school. And so that partnership for me is just so essential and something, like Ed said earlier, that we're really going to reflect on now moving forward now that we are back in school and make sure that we really build that and grow that so it is fantastic. What about you, Ed? What do you think in terms of the big lesson? Um, I think one of the things that when we did go to a big live, um, well, just being online a lot is uh, our pupils actually needed to be supported and helped in how to behave online. Uh, I think that was one of the things that we we um, we needed to coach them and work with them on what is what is appropriate online etiquette and how and how do you conduct yourself and what is you know we, we spend years and years with our pupils on on how we on how we're respectful with each other in a physical space and how we look after each other and how we're kind um and, and and all of our, our really important values that we have at school and we we found we needed to do more of that um and translate that to a virtual space um so we developed an e-citizenship uh curriculum and this was this is really linked to our pshc curriculum where we we talked about things like e-kindness and e-respect um and e-language what the language that you would use because because it was it was new and novel software to suddenly have emojis available to you and, and suddenly be able to you know you, you could fire off messages here here there and everywhere so it was it was really a period for us to to coach our students on on how you operate and again it was amazing we we did that all across school um, and our children really really responded and I think they really understood um, the importance of all the same values that you have in the physical space uh, being brought to the virtual space and that again was a uh, an important lesson for for all of us, I think. What did you find uh, with, with with your older children? Just before, when we were just starting in the early days, because we had this this start to the year when we didn't know each other, we were all online. The developing that classroom culture and developing the community was such an important thing to do, and it it was also about taking time and recognizing that that's an important part of learning the social skills that our students need they're, they're life skills that are really really necessary so it's not jumping straight into algebra it's it's actually stopping and saying okay we need to connect with each other we need to, to work out how we're going to communicate with each other how we're going to learn together what's okay how we're going to 
get these children engaged in our school and in the school community because normally they would they would have ECAs to go to, they would have lunchtime clubs, they would have assemblies to sit in, recitals to be part of and shows to put on. So what I was really amazed by was just how many of those aspects could become virtual. I can remember back to when we had teachers teaching the London group and uh, the group that was still stuck in India and there was a lesson for those in China. So I think in terms of the flexibility of, of our teachers and our capacity to, to make sure learning happens no matter where you are in the world is also a really important and useful lesson. Like schools don't need walls anymore. We can teach and you can learn from anywhere in the world at various different times and you can still get all of those amazing elements of a really good school. One of the nicest things about that is that whilst they're still so far away they're still with their class and I think that was the it's still with their per, you know the really important relationships that they've built with you as their teacher and with, with, with their peers and I think the children really understood that those that the people are in different parts but they, you know it's the people that they know and it was yeah so it kept that that classroom community which I think was, was super important. It really was. It was lovely. Okay, I think the last question that we have that's kind of our burning question is around technology. So I think parents are often thinking about how big a role is technology in a classroom and, and kind of why is tech so important when we go back to school? Should it still be used and, and sort of what, what's the point? So Ed, do you want to start on that one? Yeah, I think um, I think tech uh, there's been an explosion of use of tech at the moment. And I think um, there's been a lot of time and resources and people thinking about technology in the classroom. I think um, that landscape is definitely changing. It's changing quite fast. Um, and there will be there will be elements of technology that we, we incorporate now um, in the classroom that we wouldn't have maybe done as much of before. Um, all children have got their, their accounts to our Office 365 suite of resources. We can use them to really facilitate learning in, in many different ways. Um, we've got our, you know, the, the softwares that I talked about before, we will always have them set up now so that if we if we need to, we've always got a hybrid model if we need to go out of school and, and come back into school. So we'll always we'll always have that set up and ready. Um, we've, we, we use an AI program that's an adaptive program. And I think one of the big um, kind of moves in education is about adaptive technology that really learns a student's um, profile and their and where they're at in their learning, uh, responds to their answers, and then and then puts a very tailored pathway in front of them. And we uh, brought a, a technology platform on board as part of our virtual um, offering quite early, and and used that as a as a as a proportion of it. Um, and that gives teachers a huge amount of data on that individual student, and we and and we can then respond to that. So I think technology is always going to play. An important part, um, but I think what what was has also been never clearer um, than ever before is how important the physical, tactile, non-technology aspects of of, um, of of education are as well. And I think the 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 word I keep, you know, the, the kind of phrases I keep hearing a lot at the moment is balance uh, um, and that kind of thing, and, and making sure that we have the right balance of education. And that's that's true of of any changing landscape that we make sure that we still have the right balance of experiences and part of that are the the kind of in-person experiences the the actual relationships that you develop learning on using physical physical resources in, in a in a physical space so i think there's definitely going to be some big movements um in technology and i think we will incorporate um elements of it um and, but I think it's important to keep in mind for us all to only use them for the very, very best educational outcomes, to only use them when they really enhance the provision that we that we have, to only use them when um, when it makes um, teachers' jobs more precise and gives them and, and means that they can respond to the needs of the children best. And then also there is also a huge amount of very important uh, experiences that they need to have that that aren't based on technology. So it's a it's it's the it's the real balance of both. I think. I think that's you've, you've absolutely hit it in terms of for me as a teacher what's what's always been the most exciting part of technology is its ability to support us with assessment so that's that knowing where your child is in terms of their learning exactly at this second we've got 24 students 
and technology can support us to know in a in a second and capture that information and keep that information so we know how are they feeling about this um, have they understood it have they have they moved on in the right way and the technology and the especially with the new ai software that's being used um, more and more and more that will learn about each learner and capture that information um, as you're going through your your teaching or your lesson you might ping something out very very quickly and there'll be a moment and the technology will support you to capture this picture um, and use that and keep that for you as a teacher. So you don't need to worry about that. You can focus on just later picking up that information, um, either in the moment or a little bit later, and utilizing that to realize, okay, well, that child over there didn't perform so well, or they weren't feeling so great about this, or they're not very confident, and the picture starts to build. And the technology can grasp all of that for you, and you can focus, as you said, Ed, on what it is that you're going to do to support each one of those individual children with their learning journey and you've got this technology going away that will, will also develop a pathway for them but you as a physical teacher can just dip into that and take that information and focus it on okay well I've, 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 I've come to the conclusion that parallelograms are new you are not making sense so I'm now going to take you and we're going to have a little chat about parallelograms and we're going to get this nailed because I can I can see that really quickly and I don't need to take a lot of my day to work that out I can quickly capture information so for me that's that's what's so exciting about technology and it 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 does have a place and we're very careful in where we choose to use it and it has to make an impact it has to make a difference but the fact that we can and we do is really really powerful there's incredibly sophisticated educational technology out there that's just getting better and better and better and it's just it's a tool in our in our massive repertoire of, of tools that we use as teachers and it's a really powerful one how do you find it emma with the little ones yeah, absolutely. I think what we've done now is we've reflected on our use of technology and we've looked at it really, really thoughtfully and really consciously, making sure that we know why we use technology and that we're not just using it because we're using it because it enhances learning, because it makes learning better for the children. And actually, we've talked as a team in our campus about how actually to use less technology. So instead of maybe sharing a video on the whiteboard, let's go outside, let's have a really hands-on experience. Um, and we've just planned that into our day even more so and been even more conscious about that since we've been back in school. And yes, just as you've said, there's brilliant apps, absolutely amazing apps, even for the earliest children who can give you that feedback. But then there's also things like virtual reality, um, augmented reality. There's amazing things out there that are so, so exciting for children. But it is our job now to make sure that we're using that really purposefully and so that it is really in the best interests of all of those children so that they can progress and develop effectively. Yeah, exactly. As you said, I think it, it does bring some incredible incredible benefits and the, v the VR goggles can take you to a to another space um, like you said we've had year three going to, to ancient Greece and you've had year six going into you know into the into the trenches of of, uh, of war to try and get a, a feeling for, for what it's like so I think it's a can really transport pupils to to another space um, one of the things the other things about technology that we're really mindful of is is about that that shift of our pupils from move, simply being users of technology to being creators of technology. And I think that never before have they been been stronger in their skill set of, of, of being able to do that. So we're redefining tasks to make sure that they are really, they are experiences and they're creating um, outcomes that couldn't have been done um, if it wasn't through the use of technology. So that's a, a good way of us, you know, you're piecing together media in a way that you never would be able to if you were opening a, you know, opening a book or creating a brochure, you suddenly taking, you know, creating your own guided tour of a, of a, of a, of a place using technology in a, in a place you've never been before. Um, so it's, it's, it, there are some incredible uses of technology and I, and I, I think it's the responsibility of us as, as educators to make sure that we use it for their absolute um, best purposes. But I think that's, that's, that's the exciting part. I think it's, it's a really amazing time to be part of education. I think there are some, some we're, we're pushing boundaries now um, that, that um, more than ever before. And I think actually this pandemic has, has really turbocharged the EdTech um, kind of arena. And I think there's more and more coming out as a result of it. So I, I do feel there's been lots of positives that have come out of this um this this period and i think there's 
you know, there's been some challenges for sure, but overcoming challenges brings, you know, great, great gains. I think they've done extremely well. Okay, that's Sorry, to uh, link to the positives, I think using technology for that parent partnership is going to be something that yep. is huge going forward. I think things like our meetings that we're having with parents, being able to just do those on teams instead of the parents having to leave work early or taking a day off work, being able to do that on their time is brilliant. I think training and development for parents and um, parent partnership events, workshops, celebration afternoons, we can be much more flexible with that and give another window into their child's life at school. And I think that's going to be a huge gain for parents and for teachers to make sure that partnership grows and grows um, every single year. I agree with that. That's something that we've all found. I think that there, there has been this accessibility and one of the side, um, a sidebar to that is because we have got this Teams platform where we have all of our students with their their own unique um, email, and we can we can pop a little message off to groups of students or individual students. In terms of having access and connectivity across the size of our school, I found personally amazing at allowing and supporting me to talk to more students about their learning. So pinging out a message to the student council, or asking for volunteers who's interested in joining something um, and doing some work, who would like to come and um, talk to us about something. All of those avenues for communication because of our technology use are, are just there now. We have a structure set up and I think that's also really powerful at, at generating this really tight knit community where the students' voices are really heard and that they can really get involved. So I found that really useful. So I think, I think we've talked a lot about all the different aspects of VSE. So I think we've covered everything we planned for today's session. So thank you. Thank you, Emma. Thank you, Ed. Um, it's really good to talk to you. Thank you all for joining us here. If you want to know more about our school, you can visit us online at nordagriaeducation.com. Um, we're looking forward to seeing you all at the school as soon as it's safe to do so. So we'll say goodbye. So goodbye from Hong Kong. Bye. Bye.